All right, so to get started this week, what we're going to do is get familiar with uh, MKDocs and Git Lab, and we're going to be publishing our websites. So the first thing we need to do is download and install Python. So you just Google Python and downloads and download this one. And when you install it, it is very important. Uh, I'm going to make sure that before I even click install now, I want to make sure I add Python 3.10 to path. If you don't do this, you're going to have a bad time. Um, it's not terrible, but it won't work. And then you'll just need to reinstall it and then check that box again. Um, or it'll say uh, add Python 3.10 to environment variables. They might not say path. Um, so I'll show you that here. All right, so let's say that you've already installed Python and uh, you didn't click that box to add to path. You just say modify and next, and then make sure you check add Python to environment variables and then install again. The next thing that we need to do is install VS Code. So this is Visual Studio Code. It is different than Visual Studio. This is an integrated development environment, and it's basically a really flexible platform. You can code in many, many different languages in this platform, um, and it has a lot of tools built in to make coding for different stuff easy. So go ahead and download this one. Uh, it should install, and you should be ready to go. And if you run it, it should look something like this. Now, I'm not going to worry about running it right now. It should, as long as you can open it, close it, you're good to go. The next thing is we need to go to our gitlab.fabcloud.org. Go ahead and log in. Uh, we want to create a new page. So we want to click the plus and say new project or repository. Create a blank project, name it, and just name it site for your website. And um, this is going to be the path, the web page that you will visit to uh, go to the main GitLab site. And a little description. And go ahead and click Create Project. I've already created mine, so here it is. It should give you a blank GitLab site. And what you got to do is go over here to clone. You're going to want to download this to have a local copy you can edit. So you're going to clone. Now, uh, you'll read a lot about SSH. SSH is a particular way of encrypting a connection between two computers, you and the server in this case. Uh, problem with that is it doesn't work on Central Piedmont's campus. So we can only use HTTPS from Central Piedmont's campus. So go ahead and click that one. And it will say, do you want me to open Visual Studio Code? Click yep. Will you like to allow this extension to open the URL? Yep. And then it's going to ask you, where do you want me to store your local copy of the website? I have a place that I like to keep my uh, Fab Academy stuff. It's in my documents, and I call it Git GUI because there's another interface that I like to use too. So there you go. Um, you might just want to call it like Fab Academy or GitHub or something like that. And I'm just going to select that, and it cloned the repository. It said, would you like to open this repository? I'm going to go ahead and open it. Do you trust the authors of this file? Yes, I am the author. So there we go. Uh, the only thing that is in that project is, oh, let me go back here, here we go, is a file called readme.md, and it just says simple website using mkdocs. Whenever I load this up over in this panel, it shows me that file, and if I click it, it shows me that text. This is the markdown language. So you can see this hashtag site gives a stronger heading to the word site. And so it's uh, just markdown language. Now, you might want to see a preview of what 
this markdown language would look like when you do make a web page as you're typing. And there's a simple way to do that. Up here in the right hand corner, you can see this uh, double pane with a little magnifying glass. You click that and it shows you kind of a rough outline. It doesn't render it exactly like MKDocs might, um, but it's really close. It just shows you the basic, this is a heading, uh, this is your simple text here. Um, you could do a bulleted list. And, and all sorts of stuff like that. So that's really helpful whenever you're starting to make these pages. So you can save those things and you would expect it to be updated looking like that. I'm going to delete these things and you can close this simply by closing that. You could always open it back up if you wanted to. The next thing that we need to do is set up MKDocs. So MKDocs is basically an app that allows you to create a website easily out of markdown files like this that just has the text and the, the data that you want. Uh, and it automatically updates a theme file for you. And so you can change the theme and the whole look of your website, but all the text can stay the same. And it does this in a way that makes uh, just flat web pages, not like a whole big overhead that lives on the server, just flat web pages. So we're going to do a couple of things for that. First, I'm going to go to this icon and I want to install uh, Python extension. And this first one here, the Microsoft uh, certified Python extension here is the one that I use. I don't really know about these other ones. I haven't ever played with them. Um, this one's got 49 million people that use it. That one has 3.8. Just pick that one that most people use. Um, it's got some things like syntax highlighting and some other cool stuff that's built into it. It's actually way more overkill than we'll ever need. Even if we're doing Python coding, it's more overkill than you'll ever need. So uh, go ahead and install that. You just click it and that'll say install. So you can install it. Um, yeah, there's a couple of really handy ones up here, but uh, don't worry about that. And then you might want to install Git if it's not already on there. Um, and there's some cool Git stuff too, if you want to see like merging and that, you know all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I think, I, I don't think you need to install that because it already is built in. So, um, yeah, Python's all you really need. The next thing we need to do is go to terminal, create a new terminal, and this is going to open up in that project folder. So this is in my documents, my Git GUI folder, and it created that, uh, folder called site. And I can say ls to list the files that are in there. And it's just readme.md, just like I showed before. If I want to see that over here again, I can click on the File Explorer icon, and that will take me to show me the folder uh, and all the files inside. What I need to do now is install my mkdocs. And so to install the mkdocs, uh, I'm basically just going to use this terminal, and I am going to type in pip, oh, got a type in there. I'm gonna clear it first. So pip space install space mkdocs dash m-a-t-e-r-i-a-l. That is the material, uh, that is, material is the name of the theme we'll be using. So you can go ahead and install that. I've already got it installed, so it says requirement already satisfied but yours will probably have some little download bars and that kind of thing to show you that it's indeed installing things. The next thing that we need to do is to install a plugin that, PIP, or that uh, MKDocs needs. So I'm gonna PLS to clear my screen again so you can see what I'm typing. I'm gonna say pip3 install mkdocs dash git dash revision uh, uh, dash date dash localized dash plugin. Uh, I'm just going to give you this to download and copy and paste. You can use that instead of having to type it. 
and I've already installed that. Uh, so this is just a plugin that the material theme uses. So I'm just hitting CLS to clear my screen. The next thing that we need to do is actually create the site. And in order to do that, I'm actually going to go up one folder. So I'm going to say CD for change directory space dot dot, which means go up to the previous folder. And what that looks like here, um, I am uh, currently I'm in in this folder site. And when I say CD dot dot, it's going to go up to get GUI. So that's all it's going to do. And you'll see that reflected in the path. And here I'm going to say MK doc space new space, and I'm going to call it site. So site right here is the name of the folder that I want it to install a new mkdocs project in. So I'm going to hit enter, and it wrote two files, and you can see that they appeared right here. Uh, I've got mkdocs.yml. That is essentially that is the, uh, the template for the theme. And then you've got a folder called docs, and inside that is index.md. And index.md is your first web page. In order to see this web page, we have one more thing to do. We say mkdoc space serve, and this is going to open a local server. Oops, I have to go into the site folder, so I'm going to say cd space site, and then mkdoc space serve. Um, if you hit the up button, you can go to previous commands, by the way. That's handy if you've messed something up. So mkdocs dash, uh, space serve, and it builds the documentation, cleans the site directory, and it built the website, and it says it is serving it on this website right now. So if I hit the control button and I click it, it opens that up in a new web page. So this is my web page, and I'm hosting it on my local computer server. It's not on the internet for anyone else to look at yet. It also just basically just has a couple of simple things set up here. So let me change some of this. I'm going to say um, not welcome to MK Docs. Welcome to welcome to my Fab Academy website. So I'm going to save that, and when I save it, it automatically updates that page. And you can see here it indeed updated my page. So this is a pretty cool thing. It's got a search built in. It's got all sorts of stuff built into it. It makes it so much easier to make websites. So all we have to do is keep track of the stuff that we put in here in Markdown language, and it will then post this stuff uh, to the web page. Once I have saved what I want to be on my web page, this is exactly what I want it to, sh to look like for everyone on the internet to see. I need to push this to my GitHub site because right now it's only on my local repository, which means it's only in this one folder on my computer. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to hit Control C, and that is going to shut down the server that was running my code as a live web page for me to look at. To be able to publish our website, we are going to be using Git. Git is a way of tracking changes in code and documents. And it does it in a really interesting way. Uh, multiple people can be editing it at the same time, and then all of them synchronize it on the web. And so Git has a couple of steps to it. So let's take a look here. So we have what we call the remote repository, or repo. That is our Git lab site. So this, that's this page. We cloned this earlier, and that made a local repo, a local repository. And this is just a folder now on our computer. But more than just being a regular folder, it has a special uh, function in Git. So it is just called our working directory. So we make changes to these files and save them. And then we need to do what's called a git add. And you'll see us type that in a moment. Um, this adds the changes that have been made to those documents to the staging area. And then we git commit. And that puts this in our local repo. And the, re the repo, the repository, is essentially like a database of all the changes that have happened in all the files. And the reason you want to do it this way, as opposed to just regularly saving your documents, is you can always go back to previous versions of the code. And this is essential. 
because uh, this is code, so you will mess up. And it's like a video game. A video game expects that you're going to die a bunch of times along the way, and so there are regular save points where you have all your stats, all your weapons, all those kinds of things. Well, with code, you're definitely going to die a lot. Uh, and so you're going to need to go back to some previous working stable version of the code because the changes that you make may or may not work out right the first time, right? And so um, having this database of changes is very helpful to make you you know, uh, effective as a programmer in the long term and to do complicated projects. Um, now, when we do a commit, we do that to our local files, our local repo. Once we're done with that local change, and we like the way that, you know, in this case, our website looks, we will push it to the remote repo. So that synchronizes everything with the cloud. And so that's essentially what we're going to be doing. Um, you'll see the different steps, and there's a couple ways to do it. So I'm going to show you the graphical way first, and then uh, show you the uh, command line version. So now I want to put this on my web page. So I'm going to go in here, I'm going to hit Control C, and that is going to shut down the server that was running my code as a live web page for me to look at. And there's a couple of things I can do. I could either do this in the terminal down here, or I could do it by clicking buttons. And so I'm going to show you both. So to click the buttons, you click up here to source control, open that panel. It's right here, it looks like uh, goofy train tracks. And then this button up here, you're gonna say changes, and then stage all changes. And this is gonna show you the changes that you have made. These are the staged changes. Then you're gonna click commit staged, Hit enter and now it says sync changes so if I click this button it will push my new web page to my GitLab page I'm gonna say okay and there we go so I can check that here uh, this is my old page because I haven't refreshed it yet when I hit refresh it should have my new stuff there. And there we go. There's my readme, there's my MK docs. In my docs folder, there's my index.md. So how would I do this if I were doing it all in the terminal down here? Well, you say git space add. And this is going to be the thing that stages the changes. So anything that you have changed gets what they call staged. And then you hit enter for that. And then you could say git commit dash m. And in these quotation marks, you're going to make your comment. And then whenever you, that says I'm, I'm just nothing to commit because everything's up to date. Uh, when you're ready to put it on your web page, your actual push it to the, the Fab Cloud site or GitLab site, you say git push. And if there's anything to push, it'll push it. So that is basically it.